Let's have a look behind Isaac's panel. Now for Isaac, I have made a little stand because he's going to put this on the table. And we don't want this falling over. Uh, yes, I haven't taken the labels off yet because this is a pretty new stand. And of course it's not going to come off nicely, is it? We have the computer lead plugged in at the moment because that's what I was using to display the serial monitor. But it does not need a laptop connected. Of course with the Arduino board it's standalone. You can manage itself. So I'm now covered these boards. So behind here, uh, in a minute I'll show you that board over there. Um, or oh, is it this one? No, it's this one. This one, I still have the circuit boards on display. These two, I've covered up the circuit boards with this. So now it's pretty well protected. There's no dust going to be able to get into there. And there's also a big gap. Well, not a big gap, but you can just about get your finger in there. All the way around, so it's obviously not going to overheat or anything. Not that it gets hot anyway, but um, electronics is a good idea to give them a little bit of ventilation. Nothing special about a stand really. <laughs> I've nut and bolted it on so it's not going to fall off or anything. Uh, that bolt goes all the way through. And you can see it behind there. See that bolt behind there? So the panel is screwed onto the wood on this one. There's a little standoff behind there because these arrows have a thickness to them. There's a backing on them. Some of these arrows you see broken off and you see sort of like a plate, sort of like f almost flush to the metalwork behind here. Well, that's when these get damaged. And I have got one that was damaged. Um, I glued it back on. Um, but yeah, these have a backing to them. You can probably see that moves. The backing is underneath there. So with that standoff, there's a little, well, it's like a half a millimetre of, of space behind there. So in other words, when you put these in tightly, it doesn't bend the panel backwards and bow upwards. <laughs> Damn labels. Right, so that is Isaac's panel. And that is ready to be sent. And Isaac's mum will have to put these back on again. But it's fairly simple. Now we go on to this one. Now this one only has a call button. Doesn't have an alarm button. That's basically because I ran out of these, these buttons. But that's fine. I've got this little one here. Behind here I have chosen a white LED, but as the button is red, it lights up red. But it's a little bit brighter when it's a white LED and a red button. Watch. That's pretty cool. This one is not backlit. These ones are backlit. You can sort of like see the glow of the, the LED in the middle, which is dim. Then there's two LEDs on the LED ball behind, which are bright. So. That's the two either side, and the backlit one is the one in the middle. You can see that in one of my previous videos. This one is exactly the same. It's backlit all the time. Slightly different sounder. <laughs> That's quite cool, actually. Now, the power is 12 volts. So the power adapter is 12 volts. Now, for Isaac's mum, I would suggest that if you get fed up of this all the time, if you remove the power adapter, well, you can chop the wire <laughs> on the speaker, which is behind, there it is, it's there. You have to remove the screws for that. Or an easier way, so the sound doesn't work, if you remove the power, like that, and then you connect it with one of these um, printer leads which I will give you one of these 
um, and connect this, obviously it's USB at the other end, but just connect it into any USB charger. And oh yeah, I pressed the call button, didn't I? Then you will be providing the board with 5 volts instead of 12 volts. Now when you provide it with 5 volts, it's not enough power. Now I haven't actually got that connected at the other end at the minute. But when you press the alarm button, the sounder is actually 12 volts. But running at 5 volts, when you press that, it will light up. But the sounder won't do anything. It makes a little click, which is not quite enough power to make the sounder work properly. Uh, so that's what I advise. Easy solution. I was going to put a switch on the back here so you can isolate it, but you can just move it over to there. One thing you've got to be careful of is I haven't got any retainers for this. So obviously, you know, if you pull that hard, it's going to snap the old, snap the old Wiener ball behind there. So you just got to be a little bit careful. But this one, got a little screw which holds it in position. And then this you can release by doing that. There you go. So put the power lead in. Then you just put that inside there. There you go. Hopefully that will protect that connector on the end there. Right, anyway, come into this board now. This is the one where I've left the uh, Arduino board and the transistors exposed. That one, this is for James. This one I have also added. The cover. Exactly the same thing. I haven't added the clips on this one. Uh, there's a few exposed wires and that's basically because when I was doing these three boards, uh, every, well, every board is slightly different. I worked out a different way of doing things. Um, so obviously the cable route on that one was slightly different to this one. But it's the board and the transistors that I'm really protecting here, so it's fine really. And I've got the sounder there. The other bleeper, which is the arrival bleep bleeper, is behind here. So that's the alarm sounder. Right, so on to this one. The final result of how the boards looked. Right, the first thing is I have, sp I have spent a lot of time trying to protect the wood on this side from getting scratched or knocked or anything like that. So every time I put it down, I always put it on like on a sponge or this foam. Right, so the other ones, what I've done is I've moved the transistor board up to here and I put the lid over the top. Um, the pillars, which hold the circuit board down. There you go. They are there to give a little bit of distance between anything that sort of like covers it over. The Arduino board. So this is um, connected by 12 volts. Uh, the maximum voltage these can run at is 12 volts and they say that that is a continuous running voltage. If you give it 13 volts, really that's one volt over what it recommends. You can go up to 16 volts, but that's gonna be cooking the board if you leave it on all the time. So 12 volt power supply is good. 13 volt power supply is okay, but these are 12.2 volts I measured on the multimeter perfect and of course you can power it via the usb port but then if you do that the alarm sounder doesn't work on these ones because the sounder is actually 12 volts and won't run off 5 volts it'll still work okay and the leds will still come on everything is normal but the alarm sounder won't work right so well you've seen all the other videos probably but these are the inputs and outputs you can program these pins as inputs or outputs. Um, all of these are programmed as outputs and that's because I have so many digits to light up. I mean, uh, count the outputs, 
So count the outputs, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 outputs just for the display here, 15 for the call button, 16 for the up arrows, um, that's it. <laughs> I've got no inputs or outputs left, that's why I couldn't really do anything with the um, alarm sounder, so this is just wired directly to a sounder. So the only input is, I think, one of these red ones down here. Um, and that will be correct because on this board behind is the call button. Give it a little press so you can see it. There it is. The red and black is for the LED and the yellow and blue is for the switch. So they go into the plastic trunk in and they come along directly to this board. They don't go through the transistors, the buttons. And it will be either, well, that input there or that input there. So there's only one input on these, all the rest are outputs. Now, every single output is connected to a transistor. So I've mentioned this on my other videos. Two rows of eight transistors. There you go. Let's see all the little transistors down the bottom there. So these wires trigger the transistors. These wires are the voltage outputs from the transistors. So in other words, we're switching power from the pink wire which is the positive so this is the voltage coming in and this loops from that track over to this track and if you look behind the circuit board which you can't now because it's glued down the track goes across all the transistors so this is providing the power for all these transistors and all these transistors when you put a small voltage in here it then switches the big voltage or current rather onto these wires now these are the ones that have the resistors now i would have put these on the circuit board but these were originally connected directly onto here and well i will need to get these sort of like sent eventually so i mean that's perfect nothing wrong with that so then the power comes up here and then these wires on with the rubber sleeves with the resistors they're the ones that actually go back into the trunk in and then they go to whichever LED that wire is controlling. I turn on the serial monitor. That will reboot the board as well. Now every time it does something it outputs text back down the USB cable. And then it comes up on the Serial monitor. It's waiting for you to select a couple of options and then it will list what it's doing. Let's press that button. It's on a wait timer, let me just call the lift then. Ah, oh, it's already on the ground floor. Press the button twice. Not sure what floor that was. It's number seven. It's because the board is still on the floor and I didn't really get to see what floor I was selecting. Up it goes to floor number seven. Six, five, four, three, two. Ah, I'm chasing it now. You can see the flicker there. The doors opening. Doors closing.
and it's gone in, inactive, but only for seven seconds and it started back up again. There we go. Pretty cool. And this one now has version 13. The uh, difference in the version that it had before as the one that it has now is the flicker and also the floor selection process. Uh, that wasn't um, on the previous version. Uh, actually, that was back on, this was on version 9, which didn't have that. 13, that's how many versions it's taken to perfect all this. Oh, not ready. Gives you an error bleep if it's not ready. So, doors opening. Didn't see it. One, two, there we go. Floor selection process. You'll notice that the LEDs obviously flashing very, very fast. And same with the call button. Sort of see that. It's asking for a floor. If you don't press one, it just won't do anything. Okay, timed out, the doors were shut, and then it would go on to do whatever it's got to do. That will be inactive, random floor, or continue in the same direction, which is the most likely option. Ah, the call button is pressed. So that will come down to the ground floor. You'll notice that the up arrows are red on these boards. And that's because Isaac likes red. So I changed the white ones to red ones. Uh, the white ones are slightly brighter. So the one over here, this is all white LEDs. Now, Otis panels are white bulbs. You can sometimes get red arrows, um, but the majority are white arrows. Have a look at the straw hat LEDs. <laughs> Pretty cool. I've spaced them up to be as close to the panel as possible. These are very wide angle LEDs. And those are the LEDs for the up arrows. So, I don't really know what else to say, but... Been doing this since November. And here is the result, and it's been fun. And one thing that it's definitely given me is the ability to program Arduino boards, because... Um, Tom Holm, he initially programmed these boards. Um, but it's a long process, you know, I mean, to write coding, to test it, to leave it running, see if it fails, and then sort of like debug it and all that, and that's quite con time consuming. So he spent about three days doing the initial programming on this, and then <laughs> I spent about, I don't know, about a month um, redoing bits, changing bits, improving bits. I mean, the flicker, oh, I like the flicker. That flicker that tells you it's starting up or the doors are opening, doors are closing. Um, I put that on there. And I had to do a little bit of uh, recoding here, but um, that's because I've got, well, I haven't got time on my hands, but I had a lot more time than what it would have taken for Tom to keep connecting in via Skype and doing a little bit more coding. He would have been doing this for absolutely ages. Instead, I did it for absolutely ages and I learned how to program an Arduino board. But anyway, James and Isaac, I hope you have great fun with these boards. Hope they don't go wrong. <laughs> and that's been a pleasure doing these for you. So take care and that is the end of the project.